The call for self-denial teaches the pursuit of satisfaction in God. Mark 8, 34. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel's will save it. And what does it profit a man if he gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? This is in every New Testament book, this idea that, that who we are as followers of Jesus is we are people who suffer like Jesus suffered. The reason we have to take up our cross and deny ourselves is not because we're liable to have too much pleasure in God. So we need a little bit of, little bit of suffering thrown in. The reason we have to take up our cross and deny ourselves is because we are so liable to find our pleasures elsewhere. And, and you guys, this is the world's message, right? Pleasure. How could a loving God tell me to deny my own pleasure? See, the world says, love yourself. Grab all you can. And follow your desires, whatever you want. If it's in there, then you have the right to fulfill it and fulfill those desires. Love yourself, grab all you can and follow yourself, your desires. Jesus says, deny yourself, grab a cross, and follow me. So, the teaching of Jesus about self-denial teaches you to pursue your joy where it is, not where it isn't. At the end, it's going to get terrible, not because of what happens out there, but because of what happens in here. He's not talking about atheists here. He's talking about people in the church who have no regard. He goes, this is why it's going to get terrible. The world's always going to be the world. Those who are dead in their trespasses and sins will always be dead in their trespasses and sins. We can't control that, but he says, in the church. There needs to be a concern for holiness. Where would we be without self-denial? In love with the world, that's where we'd be. Suicidal pleasures, that's where we'd be. And you will never outgrow the need for that command. Die, Christian, every day. Put to death what is earthly in you. I mean, it's a message that the world is teaching. I mean, even sociologists are saying that this is the most narcissistic generation in the history of the world by a long shot. That we're so self-centered, so in love with ourselves that we can't even see straight. We don't even get it. We think it's perfectly normal for everyone to make a page about themselves. Don't think you've given up Christian hedonism. It is all about joy. It's all about, oh, more of you, more of you, none of that. I'm not going to be killed by that. I don't care how good it feels. You like Peter who says, you know, at the time of the past, that was enough. 
Have you had enough of your sin? Aren't you tired of coming to gatherings like this and, and, and you're like halfway excited to be here, to be with the people of God, and yet you know you have so much sin you're holding on to and you're just sick to your stomach. You're like half-heartedly worshiping, but also knowing you're not willing to let go of certain things. And aren't you done living that way? Have you had enough? Flannery O'Connor, short story writer, novelist, described the connection between self-denial and the quest for joy like this. Always you renounce a lesser good for a greater. The opposite is what sin is. Picture me with my ground teeth stalking joy, fully armed, for it is a highly dangerous quest. Oh, is it ever? It may cost you your life. It may cost you everything in this world. Let me ask you something. Why does a pig go back to the mud? Someone answer me out loud. That's all, because he's a pig, yes. That's what pigs do. You can wash off a pig and he's going to... I seriously saw this like a month ago on this ranch. This couple was washing this pig and they had it perfectly clean. And they're just doing everything they could to keep him from his pen. You know, no, 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 get him, get him, get him. He's, he's, he's charging for the dirt. He's running for the mud. Why? Because he's a pig. That's what pigs do. See, but what Jesus can do is he's, he makes you a new creation. Where I'm not a pig anymore. You know? I don't, I'm not a slave to sin. You know, that's why he's saying, look, if you're still, just keep running back, keep running back. It could be because you're still a pig. And you're not this new creation in Christ yet, where you hunger and thirst for righteousness, and you're a slave to what's right. And even when you start to dabble and you start to get a little dirty in sin, it drives you crazy. You're like, this is the new me. I like to stay clean now. It's the weirdest thing. But God changed me from the inside out. The Holy Spirit really did enter me, and now I hate that dirt. I'm not a pig anymore. Now I've been a Christian for 64 years, and every day I must deny myself my bent to seek pleasure elsewhere. And so it's not this promise of follow Jesus and all your suffering will be gone, but it's quite different. It's very much like Jesus who says, hey, are you sure you want to follow me? Because foxes have holes and birds have nests, but I have nowhere to lay down my hand. Are you sure you want to follow me? Because if anyone wants to follow me, he's going to have to deny himself. He's going to have to pick up a cross and follow me. Are you sure you're going to want to follow me? Because I didn't come to bring peace to your family. I actually came to bring a sword. Whoever loves his life loses it. Whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If someone offers you 80 years of pleasure in this world, then eternal misery, you better hate your life in this world. <laughs> or you're not a Christian hedonist. You're a fool. <laughs> 